Good morning, and welcome to season two of The Review, the Instagram Live podcast where Kandama news, culture, and stories are shared over the warmth of coffee. My name is Adam, and I am your host, and today I am joined by Soul Kandama's Pro, 2021 Battle at the Border champ, the swollest Kandama player you know. Here today on The Review, we have Liam Router joining us. We're going to be talking all about his journey to Seoul, how he got so swole, and we're going to be talking all about space stations and his recent success at Battle at the Border, and the future. We're going to be talking about a lot of things, competitive kendama, you name it. So as we get ready to dive in, I want to know down in the chat, what are you drinking this morning as you tune in to the review? We always like to take a little time here on the weekend, on the Saturday, to shout out some of the live viewers, to shout out the community, because kendama is more than just a ball in a cup. It's more than just an individual sport in which we progress individually. It's a community in which we grow together. So let me know down in the chat what you are drinking this morning and we will get ready to bring Liam on here. I see Austin Donovan down there drinking his water. Secondly, the other thing I wanted to point out to you guys that are tuning in either live or afterwards is we launched the Cafe Kendama website or at least the updated version of the website this past week. We kicked off with our partnership with Soul Kanamas to do some distribution of their wonderful Kanamas up here in Canada. So if you're a Canadian tuning in and you're looking to get a new Soul vibe, we got a few of those left up on the site as well as these Kanama Latte mugs if you're watching live or watching the IGTV afterwards. So make sure you head over there, go check it out. We're going to have a lot more up there soon. So make sure you bookmark that page and give it a, a subscribe so you get those email notifications. Uh, secondly, or thirdly, I should say, uh, the one thing that I want to remind you guys is that this is going to be a live conversation with Liam Router. So go ahead and drop your questions down in the Q&A tool at the bottom, and we will do our best to answer all of your questions. We got a ton of them ahead of time on the post, so make sure you get them in early if you want your questions asked. We've set some time aside in today's episode for that. So without further ado, let's get Liam on here, and let's dive into this week's episode. Uh, let me just shout out a couple of people down here of what they're drinking first. Sten Stint, it's late here in Estonia, so he is drinking tea as he tunes into this caffeinated podcast. Soul Kanamas, they are drinking their Soul Blend. I'm assuming that's Chad over there getting ready to tune in. Total Control, welcome here. Let's get Liam on here and let's dive in. Why don't you guys smash that like button and show Liam some love as he gets ready to hop on for the review. Liam. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. How you doing, man? Perfect. I'm doing pretty good. How about you, man? I am doing fantastic. Hey, before we dive in, congratulations on your recent win at Battle at the Border. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you you're still riding the high of that? I still am. I'm still super stoked about it. And just yeah. It's awesome. Oh, good, good, good. You now you've competed at Battle at the Border for the past I don't even know how many years. Did did you win it before as well? I've won it two other times, actually. The first time was in 2017, and then later in 2019. Uh, okay, so, so it's like every, it's weird. It's like every other year. <laughs> yeah, every every odd it's, numbered it's year. Funny. And then you just got to yeah. give it up to someone else so that you can take it back the next year, right? You know, <laughs> sh share the love a little bit, right? <laughs> that seems that yeah, that would be the trend, I guess. Right on, right on. I, I, okay, before before we actually dive in, um, what was your highlight of Battle at the Border? Well, we'll talk a little Battle at the Border, and then we'll dive into to more of the the main content we're we're jumping into. But yeah, what was your highlight? Honestly, honestly, everything. It was. It turned out number one. It turned out a lot better than I expected because, like, that's the one event that I always want to be able to go to, like in mm. person. And like, just hearing like in the first place that it wasn't going to be in person this year was like kind of a bummer just because I love it so much. It's like easily my favorite event to go to. But um, I was just so stoked that everything was still able to go so smoothly and that everything, it really, it just was seamless and it just seemed like any other competition really. Um, yeah. And obviously the, the viewer turnout was insane. Yeah. Oh I, my gosh. You had a thousand thing. people watching yeah. the final match. That was what got me the most stoked was at the end, like when they were talking to us, like once the, the last match was done, Chad was like, we have a thousand live viewers in the chat. And I, <laughs> that was, I was like, are you kidding? Like, yeah, a thousand people. That blew my most, mind, honestly. Most viewed Kanama event of all time, I think, uh, in, in terms of the amount of viewership. And it's obviously we can't really like know how many people are logged onto 12 devices at a time. But, <laughs> exactly. But still, yeah. it was incredible to break a thousand. That was a huge accomplishment, not, e not only for Battle at the Border, for, but for Kandama. Like to get seen yeah. by that many eyes is, is pretty fantastic. Okay. It's crazy. Um, before we go any further uh, into our brew view this morning, I want to know what are you drinking this morning? I am and is it actually the morning for you? What time uh, is it? It's just, 
it just turned noon, so it's like twelve oh five right now. Ah. So yeah, but I am drinking some uh, Pike's Place roast. It's okay. It's an Arabica blend of some sort. I'm not really sure. I don't know too much about it, but it's okay. Good. Right on. But you got, got some coffee. some hazelnut. Yeah. Okay, right on, right on. And okay, uh, I always like to ask, this is a new question that we've been asking in season two of the review. And I think it's one of the best questions that has been implemented into season two. Uh, if you could teach any one person their first spike, either past or present, who would it be? I got to go with Elon Musk. Okay, right on. <laughs> that would be incredible. Because he, I'm sure he would love it. He gets interested. Like when, when something like, you know, fancy or gets him interested, he wants to go like full in with it. And, like, <laughs> He'd build like, a whole new company. For real, if you put a kendama in his hands, there's no telling what he would do with it. <laughs> oh, yeah. He'd put it up in space. That's what he'd do with it. Oh, yeah. No, then that would make all my dreams come true, honestly. Is that is that one of your big dreams is to get a kendama in space? For sure. Hopefully one of these at some point. I would, yeah. That would, that would literally make all my dreams come true. <laughs> That'd be so cool. So yeah. rad. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about your mod here in a little bit. I think I got, I got, I got a couple of yours kicking around here somewhere. I got one over there. But, um, Okay. Uh, I got I got a cherry cherry can here. Oh, there somewhere. we go. Yeah. Um, okay. And then lastly, what I want to know before we really dive into the conversation here today, I want to know who is the most inspiring player to you today. I would say, and I've I've told the same thing. I'm sorry if you hear my dog in the background, but um, all good. Uh, my favorite player over the years, for as long as I can remember, has been Kevin DeSoto. Even back when he mm. was in his Yumu days, because that was who he played for first. Mm -hmm. um, his style, like just seeing how he had such a unique style even back then and how he just incorporates it into everything he does. Uh, watching him compete like freestyle competition and just like really getting to see like what that style was and how creative mm -hmm. he was with that kind of stuff always, it, it always kept me inspired. And just being on the same team as him now, like it, yeah. it, it helps so much. Like just yeah. seeing him do his thing, it, it you know, it helps. Dude. Yeah, He's big shout outs to sure. Kevin. Kevin Kevin is one of those guys in the Konama community that is such a staple that everybody knows who he is. I don't think I, I think he's one of the most genuine, kind, and just loving people. I'm really excited to Absolutely. get him on the review in the future. We're we're talking about getting him on an episode. So I want to know more about Kevin. I want to get to know him more as well. Yeah. I think everybody should get to know Kevin a little bit more. He puts yeah, in work for the community. Yeah. I, I, did you go to his him. Yeah, did you go to his uh birthday battle last year? I didn't go last year, but I went the year before. Um, okay. Yeah. Dude, I want to go to that event so bad. It looks like such a hoot. It was a lot of fun. It was such like a chill, like laid back event. Everyone was just there having fun. It wasn't any, it wasn't like a serious competition, but it was just a lot of fun to just be there and be able to hang out with everybody. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Well, let's dive into the meat of our conversation here today. We're going to kind of hit on three things and then let the conversation flow wherever it goes. But really, I want to talk about your journey as a Kanama player, how you got into it, kind of the walk through up to where you are now with Soul Kanamas, and then talk a little bit about g getting swole. I feel like this is sort of becoming a meme in the community. You know, uh, what, what was that uh, battle at the border? There was even a giveaway. It was like swole good or, yeah, or Liam swole. Or swole. <laughs> yeah, exclamation swole uh, when you were up on the screen. And then, and then let's talk space. I think you have a depth of knowledge there that I think a lot of us are going to be really fascinated by uh, when it comes to space, why you're so interested in it, and why I should be interested in it as well. So we're going to dive into that at the end, maybe talk about more of your inspiration behind your kendama with that as well. Sweet. So let's dive in. Uh, let's just go back to the beginning, Liam. I want to know where it all began for you with kendama. What were you doing before kendama entered your life? Honestly, uh, so when kendama came into my life, I was like, just I think I was like halfway through seventh grade. Wasn't really doing too much. I was I've always been into like sports and stuff. Um, and I think around that time, I was running cross country. I used to run a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. And I was um, a soccer player, uh, at least back in middle school. So I think around that time, that's what I would have been doing. Um, and actually, not many people know this about me, but I actually did gymnastics around that time. And that's actually how um, I first found out about it. Um, I had a friend who was a few levels above me, actually not more than a few levels above me in gymnastics, but we went to the same uh, middle school. And some of the well, some of his friends on his team uh, found out about it, and then he got one uh, after hearing about it from them. He brought it to school one day um, mm -hmm. and just let me try it, and I thought it was stupid at first, and then <laughs> did my first big cup, and, you know, the same story. You know how it goes. Yeah, everybody's Instantly story. You do, and then, yeah, you do the big cup or you do a spike, and you're like, ah, where do I buy one? Yeah. <laughs> where are you? So wait, what, what, what Kendama was it? Do you remember? Uh, the one I can't remember what he had. It was definitely some cheap 
natty of some sort. I, I cannot remember for the life of me what brand it was, probably like a Caleb or something. But um, the first one that I got, because I think I ended up getting my first one in Christmas of that year, which was 2013, was a mm-hmm. blue uh, Kusa Tribute. Oh, no way. Okay. So, yeah, the old Tributes. Yeah. Dude, those are classic. I We've had what, I think we're at like 38 or 39 guests now on the show. And I should actually go back through the episodes and, and take a log of what everybody's first Kendama was. Because Ozora's, TK-16's, and Tributes are like the num- the top three of, of everyone's first Kendamas from who yeah. I've interviewed. Except for some of the newer gen players who pick up boosts or souls or whatever they're, they're playing from Target. Yeah. But that's awesome. That's super cool. So you grade seven is pretty much when you started. You got this blue tribute and talk to me about some of that that early journey and what kept you into it. Did you meet people? Um, it was at that time, it was really just myself, the friend who showed me it and then a few other guys that he got into it. We kind of had our own little group um, and it was really just us for a while. Um, we got super into it and then eventually it, it kind of spread like throughout at least our grade in school and some of some grades above and below us it it like for a while it was a pretty big fat at school um and then uh after some time i had like a little like local uh team i don't know if you've heard of all out domination before but that was like my local squad here and uh the mom of one of the um the guys on the team she actually set up like a little online shop that we had and we would like reset like we would do like wholesale for like uh companies like kusa and kenko at the time oh no way so we we would like resell those to like uh, people just kind of in our area and just kind of you know do that to like keep spreading the word about yeah. the Nama. Um, so we did that for a while and then as you know like trends die. So pretty much yeah. everybody else uh, except for our little group um, kind of stopped playing and it was just us for a while. Um, and then now it's really only in this area. It's pretty much just me and um, I, I'm sure you might have heard Dyson Campbell before. Are the names familiar but i don't know if i actually can put a face to that yeah he's um he's been a super close friend of mine for a long time now he does a lot of like um uh like photography work he okay. has been to the past couple battle at the borders um he helps us film videos uh, every now and then he's a super super dope guy and it was really just me and him for a while he doesn't do it too much anymore but i guarantee if i ever wanted to just sesh for somebody around here i could just yeah. i could hit him up and it'd be fine but that's pretty much how it's been here as far as like the whole scene goes and how it's like changed over time. Yeah. And, and so where, where are you from? Like, where was this local community? Um, it's from here. I'm in uh, Franklin, Tennessee right now. I'm actually back home from school. Um, for those that don't know, I'm, I go to school at university of Alabama, just a little bit okay. farther South of here. Um, but I'm currently back home for the weekend. So, so you're Good a Tennessee native. So you're, you're actually quite close to the Seoul kind of headquarters and battle at the border. So that's kind of your home turf down there. Yeah, so it probably definitely. probably feels pretty good to win battle at the border in your home, home oh, state a, at least. It's always a good feeling, yeah, for sure. Right on. I, I, you didn't travel anywhere for battle at the border this year. You were actually at your university competing, right? In your That's dorm right. room, in the dorm. <laughs> Dude, the the most classic Liam Rudder film spot I've seen. I don't know how many hundreds of tricks in that corner <laughs> in the same. Well, that blue the blue tank you're always wearing in the shorts. Dude, yep. I love it's consistency man I mean, exactly right it's like steve jobs he doesn't he just wears the same thing that's why he performs so good for those of you those of you youngins out there just wear the same clothes session the same it spot. Helps. that's how you're gonna for do real. it <laughs> <laughs> oh right on okay so a grid seven you were playing with dyson campbell you were getting into it uh talk to me about some of the journey towards your first sponsorship because i know and maybe not everybody knows this your first sponsorship wasn't with soul nope it was not it was with uh pineapple kendama and that didn't happen until um, 2016. Actually, I was I was kind of I was really just trying to figure out like which brand I really liked at the time. I was playing like being on like the AOD squad. We were constantly playing with like a bunch of different brands because like we would mm-hmm. get kendamas from you know multiple different companies mm-hmm. and sell those. So we were all... companies just sending you damas, or were you guys actually seeking out these companies, or were you guys already that good that companies were like, dude, let's just send this little this crew out in Tennessee just boxes of damas. <laughs> I mean, we were still like pretty small. I mean, nothing crazy, honestly, but we would definitely uh, try and like hit up these companies and just see if they would be down for us to like buy wholesale from them so we could just sell them to people around right. here. And they were all fine with it. We definitely had good relationships with the people um, like Jero and the people yeah. behind Kenco and Sweets. Um, they're, they're always super close with um, the lady who helped us run our little um, store. Um, but yeah, so we were always just playing with like whatever brands we would get at the time. Um, 
And then eventually I wanted to try and branch out and try some like lesser known brands uh, and pineapple being one of them. So I got my first one. It was like a, I think it was like a bamboo uh, on like their original shape. This is like when they were like first getting started. So I got one of those, started posting a few tricks with it. Um, I started talking to Ryan, the guy who um, runs pineapple, yeah, the owner. Ryan Trostel. Yeah, we had him on the show. Dude, guy. The guy's a beauty. The guy, awesome guy, dude, his Great story, guy. for those of you that are listening in, go listen to that episode. If you want to hear about a young hustler, he started pineapple at like 16 or 15 years old. Like, yeah, dude, if you want to get some hustle inspiration, that guy's got it. Yeah, he's definitely the right guy to talk to about that stuff. But he was super nice. He was like, hey, man, I want you on the team. Um, and he made it happen within, I think it was, we had that conversation, I want to say in April of 2016. And then my announcement came along at like the very beginning of June, I think of that year. So we, I, you know, put together a little video and got that posted. And then I was on the team, I would say for, um, definitely a solid year and a half because I went to, um, I made it to two MKOs, uh, with them. He was super dope and would pay for my plane tickets. Wow. Um, send me out there. It was, super, it was just super nice. Super, super dope. Um, but um, I think it was right after Battle at the Border 2018, actually, I decided to um, make the switch and see if maybe there was, um, you know, just see if I could, you know, possibly reach my way up to one of these higher companies, like one of my dream companies, you know, because mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to see if maybe I could. Mm -hmm. um, and so I made the announcement that I was leaving. I would say, I want to say it was either January or February of 2018. Cause it was, yeah, it was right at the beginning of 2018. Um, and then it seemed like, cause I was at battle at the border. I was talking with people, um, mm -hmm. talking to Chad and he kind of knew like what was going on. And he was like, Hey, I think we could, um, we'll, we'll send you some soul stuff. You, you tell us how you like it. And, the, um, the classic first move of the company. Yeah. Hey, well, just, it wasn't... Uh, just drop me your address. We're, we're just going to send you some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, but honestly, that wasn't even the first like interaction as far as like talking about sponsorship with them went. I actually entered the Show Your Flow contest that they were holding oh. back when they were trying to get their original team together. This was like way before Pineapple. Um, oh, so you actually tried out for the Soul team back then. Mm -hmm. And so how did that go? Obviously, it, it didn't, to... it didn't yeah, it... <laughs> happen, but, no, but not, yeah, how did then. it go? Um, I made it to the the second round of the contest. Um, there were there were two rounds, and they ended up picking the original six players um, after the yeah. second round was done. But I I at least made it to that second round, so I was yeah. I was stoked. They definitely gave me hope for the future, um, and yeah, I that's definitely a big held on to booster. that. Yeah, dude, and that's sure. something that's so missing these days. Like I, a couple of the newer, younger companies are actually starting to like re bring back these sponsorship contests, these these edit contests. I'm beginning to see it, and I love it. It just feels so weird because it's like we're past that era now. But then I'm also seeing it. I'm like, oh man, that's so cool. I wish I wish I was a a newer player and I could enter into these contests and it'd be so fun. But yeah, oh, I man, I love those days. They they were definitely like the prime Kendama days. The, the I definitely good, miss a lot of that stuff for sure. Yeah, the the quote unquote glory days of Kendama oh, yeah, back then. Hundred percent. But we're in a new era, and, and I mean, we'll we'll talk about that a little bit when when we get to to some of the competitive talks here. But so you you left Pineapple. You then twenty eighteen. What was the journey in between Pineapple and and Soul like? You were you made that decision pretty intentionally to leave Pineapple to pursue a bigger opportunity. I am curious, not to like dig too deep into that or maybe bring out something, but but. What was that decision like with Pineapple? How did that go for you? Um, it was definitely a hard decision because I love Ryan and I loved everybody on the team. But just... Yeah, who, who else was actually on the team at that time? Sorry. Um, at the time, it was on the Pineapple team. I want to say it was me. Uh, Dyson was actually on the Pineapple team too. He, oh, okay. Uh, we had a, a similar sponsorship uh, video contest and he actually won that. Um, so it was him and I and then... Um, Matthew Sprague, I don't, you, you might yep. know him. Um, he was on the team at the time too. Um, Emerson White, um, I'm trying to remember. It wasn't like a huge squad back then. And we were, we mm -hmm. were honestly making a lot of team changes. Um, Johnny Cress was actually on the team for a bit. Oh, was um, he? No way. I didn't know Johnny was on Pineapple. He was on for a little while. I think he left a little bit before I did. Um, but yeah, we were teammates for just a little bit. Um, and I'm, re I'm really trying to remember if there was anybody else because we there were definitely a lot of team there were a lot of team changes happening at that time. It was kind of hard to like keep track of like who all was still with the squad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was like the current group. Um, and then um, 
I basically just after some time, I was like, I kind of just realized like, like I kind of evaluated like how I was doing like in these competitions. And I started to like, think about like my skill level. And I was like, I know that I'm getting better. I know that if I try hard enough, there might be like a bigger opportunity out there that I can mm. actually get. Um, and even though it was like a tough decision to leave and I definitely didn't want to, I figured if, if I do this, it could be, it turn it could turn into something really good. Yeah. So I was willing to take the risk to do that. How, and yeah. How old were you when you made that decision? I was in 2018. So I was 17. That's crazy. Yeah. So that, that's, that's a pretty risky move. Like, okay. It's within the confines of Kendama, but, but still like, that's a bold move to make at that age being like, yo, I have this wonderful company, this great owner and, and everything is going really, really well here, but I want to try and I want to risk it and try and move to a larger company, maybe have a, a bit of a bigger impact. I, I don't know the entire reasoning there, but, but that, that's a risky move. Cause what if that didn't pan out? It's like once you exactly. leave a company and it doesn't pan out to go to the next company, then that's a, that's a scary zone to be in, you know? Yeah, for sure. But did you, did you have point, fears of that or were you I, pretty set? I mean, I kind of knew in my mind what I wanted to do. And I, I knew, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, like, it wouldn't phase me if it took some time to reach that point. I wasn't expecting anything to happen right away. It just, it kind of just happened to, to pan out that way. But I was totally fine with just taking some time and just kind of figuring out what I really want in Kendama. And, mm -hmm. you know, if that means just, like, playing for myself, then, like, I would be fine with that. But um, I wanted to just take some some actual time to myself and see, who I align with the most. And um, if I did want to be sponsored by somebody who I would do the, the best job of doing that with. So, mm. and it was really helpful to have like Chad and Kevin was actually a huge, uh, he played a huge role in this too. He really talked to me about like my options, um, not just with soul. He like, he didn't, the thing is he didn't, he was so great about it. He didn't shut down any of my other options because he knew that like, he knew he, he told me multiple times that I had potential and that there were definitely other companies other than, mm -hmm soul that would you know would be happy to i guess have me on board but he was great he kind of talked about it and just made help me think about like who i would align with the most not just with like um the benefits that i could have from being sponsored by a certain company because um there are definitely some that have like a lot bigger like either like monetary benefits or like you know just stuff mm -hmm. like that but um but he really just kind of made me think about who i align with the most as like a, a team player because when mm -hmm. it when you boil it down, that's like what matters the most to me is having like a strong connection with the people on the team yeah. and just having like a, a brotherhood that you can like always count on. And that's all that soul yeah. is. It Money is only, is only going to carry you so far, right? Like right. you have to want to be there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. That's cool. So you ended up joining soul in 2018 then? Yes. Cool. And so talk to me a little bit about that process then. So you, you joined soul. What was that introduction like? And then you went, was it 20? It was 2019 at NAKO that you ended up in the finals, but uh, 2018 you did still compete. Was that your first year competing with Seoul? Was that NAKO? I, I yeah, that was, was MKO 18. Right. Yeah. yeah that was the. Um, yeah, that was definitely the first MKO I did with the with the Seoul team. Um, we okay, so we had the conversation about um, the actual sponsorship thing. I would say it wasn't. It actually wasn't too long after I made my official decision uh, to leave Pineapple. Um, cause I had been talking about them or I'd been talking to them about that. Um, and they were trying to help me figure out the best way to do this because they, they knew where my mind was at. They knew what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they were help, they were helpful in helping me, um, kind of plan out like how this timeline was going to actually work. So I made my announcement and then they talked a little bit more just to make sure that everybody on the team was okay with it. And, um, basically they came back, I would say probably at the end of February, um, and said, Hey, you're, you're good. You're on the team, but we're not, they didn't want to announce, you know, they didn't want to make an announcement right away. Cause it was super quick after, you know, everything. With yeah. Happened. There, there's always that sensitivity, right. Of like, how, yeah. how soon after do you do that kind of stuff? There's, there's a whole political game there, right. Of like, for sure. You don't, you don't want to throw shade on anybody or anything like that. And right. And that's especially, and yeah. people make assumptions, right. It's crazy. Oh yeah. No, it, there's absolutely no shade at all. I, I still love pineapple so much, nothing against anybody. Ryan's an awesome dude. Um, but yeah, so we, we talked about that. He, we kind of made things like unofficial as in like people on the team knew that I was on and nobody else knew. Um, so we kind of just wanted to, <laughs> Kevin helped me uh, kind of mask the fact that I was like low key sponsored. So he told me, all right, here's what you're going to do. You're going to play just about every other, every other Kanama company's Damas 
over the next couple months until we uh, get your announcement ready. So I was playing with like Kusadama sweets, all this other mm. stuff, trying to throw people off, <laughs> trying to <laughs> the, the throw some misdirection out there. Yeah. Um, and then the announcement eventually rolled around in, um, in April. And then that was it. That's cool. That's super cool. Wow. Uh, and then, and so now it's been, it's been quite the ride and you ended up getting your own pro mod and, and we'll talk probably a little bit more about that during the space station, but you've been now with, with soul as one of their pros, one of their, their four pros on the team right now, uh, for what that's almost three years now mm -hmm. uh, you've been, been on the team and you've been a pro for two years. Uh, I was actually very fortunate enough to be a pro, um, immediately upon getting on the team. Okay. So uh, right when you were added, you were already in the process of working on your promo. Yeah. And okay, whoa. Like the most mind-blowing thing is that Chad thought that I was ready to be on the pro team. I, I told him so many times, like, hey, I don't care what team you put me on. I'll just be happy to be with you guys. Right. And, but he, he would tell me over and over again, and Kevin and Lyndon talked to me because those, those were the only other two pros at the time on the yeah. team. They said, hey, I, we really think you're ready. And I was, right. I was like, okay, I, I trust you. Like, yeah, wow. It was just I, I couldn't really believe it, but that's a humbling super experience. Fortunate. Oh, 100 to be, told, be, to be told that by a guy like Chad, who's been around in the game for forever, who's seen every pro from you know their birth to demise and everything in between. He's been around, right? For for someone like that to be like, hey, no, Liam, you're ready to be a pro. It's yeah, like that. That's a pretty crazy. humbling thing to hear from someone like that. For sure, that's so cool. Yeah, so cool. Okay. Um, let, let's take a couple of minutes here. Let's answer some questions. There were a bunch that were submitted ahead of time. Uh, some of them more pertaining to our latter half of the conversation here, but uh, let's hit through some of these. So if those of you tuning in have some questions, drop them in the Q and A. We're going to fire through the ones on the post. So if you want your questions answered on next future episodes, make sure you put them on the post. Those have top priority. So we're going to jump through these. And the first one from, from your friend and possibly mother, Anna Lee, uh, <laughs> Una Lee on, on Instagram, U-H-N-U-H-L-E-E. Uh, -E. She wants to know, do you know you're my favorite child? She tells me that all the time. <laughs> well, yeah. I've, I've, I've heard she has a lot of children in the Kanama world, but so it, she does, she definitely does. Something she's a, special to hear it. Yeah, she's definitely been like a, a very good, like, just a really good friend to have. Like, we've known her and she, um, she was really close with all of us back in my all out domination days. She um, got to know Monica, the lady who helped us run our thing. Um, and she got to know all of us after coming to a couple events. Um, and she, yeah, she's been awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we got a good question here from Julian AD underscore. How do you get ready in the morning for the day uh, of a comp? So, you know, mentally and physically, what, what do you do to prepare? And, I, you know, this is a great question for you because you've competed at the highest of levels and pretty much every ver version of a competition out there. I don't know how, I haven't actually looked through your history of freestyle competitions, but specifically open division. I've seen you place top three consistently and consistently and consistently. So yeah, how do you do it? Um, I really, what I do every morning, like on the days of actual competition is I really just try and just keep my head calm just do whatever I need to. I always have my music playing because that helps so much. And I make sure I have that when I'm actually competing too, mm -hmm. but I'm just listening to stuff that puts me in a good mood. Nothing crazy. Um, do you have a specific playlist that you use same songs or do you have just a shuffled thing? I kind of, I'll go back and forth depending on what I'm, what I'm feeling on that day. Um, but whatever it is, I just make sure it's nothing, nothing super loud, nothing crazy. Just something that keeps me like calm and, in a mm -hmm. good mood, you know, because I think that's what helps me. Do you have a um, go-to song? Do you have, like, the one song that always gets you in the Kanama mood? I really don't, because what, what'll normally happen, just, like, on, just based on, like, my history of doing this, I'll normally put on, like, a, like, a lo-fi, like, yeah. jazz, like, hip-hop mix, because yes. that, that music is just perfect for... Dude, that puts me in the mood. Stuff like that. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, anything that you do physically uh, to get prepared? Do you have um, a warm -up routine or anything? Um, I always make sure to like stretch and you'll, if you go to like actual events, you'll see me doing this with like, um, uh, Kelvin and Carter and some of the other guys on the team where yeah. we have like our own little like practice squad. We'll always do like the same things together. We'll always stretch and, uh, make sure we drink water and stuff like that. Yeah. And then we'll kind of just, uh, usually just jam for a minute and just get warmed up because if it's, if it's like an early like morning competition type of thing, you're probably not incredibly honed in just yet. So we make sure that we're at least, um, at least feeling it. And then we'll yeah. dive into the tricks and we won't go super hard on them since it's like competition day. There's not much more practice you can actually do. 
uh, with yeah. those tricks that'll, you know, it, it's not really gonna make a difference at that point, but just making sure that we're feeling good on them and working on the ones that maybe we're not feeling incredible on. Yeah, so now with the new, okay, so I wanna actually dive in on this a little bit before we answer a couple more here. Uh, a lot of the newer competitions have multiple tiers of tricks, right? They have the, the round one, round two, and round three at NACO. There were two rounds at Battle of the Border. For you, what do you focus on practicing more? Do you focus on the round one or round two? Because I've seen some pros not practice round one because they just assume that they're going to do those really well. And they try to really hone on round two so that they can place or get top three. What do you do? Um, I treat the whole thing as if it's one list. I don't break it up into Interesting. day one and day two. I practice everything. Whenever I practice them, I always make sure to go through the entire list. And I don't skip out any tricks because, uh, you know, paying less attention to those little ones that you think you have can definitely come back to haunt you later. And it has before yeah. because I've made mistakes like that. So I really, um, and you might've, I don't know if you listened to the conversation I had with um, Isaac. Oh, I um, haven't yet. I need to. Lotus. Uh, he, he put out like a video on, I think it's on the Lotus YouTube channel. Um, I kind of talked about um, like how much detail I, or, uh, or how much I pay attention to um, like even those little tricks that I think I'm good on, but you just can't, you can't like overlook them because those could mess you up if you're, you know, if you're just not paying attention to it. Yeah. Cause it, yeah, no, it's well, those ones come out of nowhere on you. Right. And you're like, oh, exactly, I for yeah. sure got a double inward lunar flip. And then you're like, wait, I didn't practice this. Oh no. And then, yeah. and then, and that's the thing. So I know for a couple of pros, actually, they, they will practice 80% of the list and they'll bank on the, the draw of the cards. Do you do that? Or do you try to be really consistent at all 100% of the tricks? I really try to, because even at, like, I know that there's definitely, you know, a, a few tricks with every trick list that, um, are kind of just there as like um like those really like banger like difficult tricks that are there to like mess people up um and so i really try and pay attention to those too because if i can get good at those and i can you know get more consistent at them then those could be the tricks that make the difference in the competition because i know if somebody else is having trouble with it then i can use that to my advantage and i can you know you know like actually take advantage of that situation mm -hmm. and get points yeah Absolutely. So. Dude, that, that's cool, man. I love getting into the headspace of like, what do people do to get ready for competitions? How do they actually do it? What's their strategy for it? And, and especially hearing from people that have actually competed at that high level is really important, especially for other players. But what do you recommend to a player to practice who maybe isn't quite, you know, good at all 100% of the tricks? Do you, would you recommend that they, they try to get really good at the ones that they're already good at? Or should they focus on their weaknesses? Um, I think there's definitely some value in trying to work on those weaknesses. Um, but obviously, totally pay attention to the ones that you are good at, because no matter what, those can be the ones that you get points on people with, too. Right. Um, so never overlook those. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, there, there's yeah. like two mindsets there, right? There's like, I want to, uh, to focus on the tricks I'm good at to win points, or there's the mindset of like, I want to focus the tricks that I'm not good at, so I don't lose points. Exactly. Right? It's like, yeah, that's, there's that's the two different exactly mindsets. Right. Mm -hmm. And and you have to you have to understand that on both tricks. It's like, man, we're getting into this new era of, of Konami competitions where we're beginning to find out people's strengths and weaknesses with certain tricks. And then you're you're learning how to like defend yourself in competitions against certain tricks, but also be really good at the ones that are your point getters, your point winners. And and that's one of some of the strats with like the higher level tricks, right? Is you want to get really good at the tricks that other people won't be good at because those are your point winners, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it gets really fun at that level where you're trying to, it's more than just playing ball in a cup at that point. You're not just like playing tricks. You're actually playing a sport and you're getting into the strategic competitive mindset of it, which is so fun. Okay, let's hit like two more here. We'll jump back into the conversation and then we'll, we'll grind through the rest of these at the end of the episode. Um, great kind of wrap up question for the first half here from Insta underscore underscore Kendama. What is your first memory of Kendama and what was your first impression of it? Did you immediately fall in love or did you gradually grow interest? Where did it all be? Like we talked about where it began, but more the heart of it, you know, where did you realize you loved this freaking game? Yeah. Um, I knew that this was going to be something that I just wanted to really dive into and like get good at, like from the beginning, honestly. And I feel like that's how it is. Like for most people, once they have that connection with it, they just want to take it as far as they can. And yeah. that's kind of how it was for me. Um, but I think like um, my earliest, like super good memory um, is something that kind of like confirmed like, yeah, this is what I want to like, like, I want to do this. I want to pursue this was um, uh, and this was actually before I was with like my uh, my all out domination squad. 
Yeah. Uh, so they actually started with a, a team of a few different guys uh, before taking me uh, or before adding me to their group. Yeah. Um, and they um, rented out this little space at um, the dance studio that uh, Dyson actually dances at and his parents actually own it. Uh, cool. So M- Monica, the lady who runs AOD, she talked to um, Stephanie, Dyson's mom, and they rented out um, one of the dance uh, rooms in there. And they had like a little jam session for people uh, in the studio and just people who wanted to stop by and just see what, like what Kendama was. We had, they had Kendamas for sale. Um, and then they basically just set up like a big, like freestyle circle and any, anybody who wanted to jump in and, you know, just kind of show off whatever tricks mm-hmm. you wanted. Cause that, those were huge back then. Like having those freestyle circles, like that's like something that you would find at like yeah. all the OG competitions and stuff. Yeah. I remember um, seeing videos of that, at like Kevin's, Kevin's B-Day battle, right? There was yeah. a, that group Mosh and people were just going ham in the middle. Kevin was doing his like lighthouse string tension things. Oh man, those videos oh, are so fun yeah. to watch. That stuff gets me excited. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, we did that. And, um, I was like, this was like the closest thing that I had ever uh, been to as far as like a competition. It wasn't really a competition, but like in my, in my eyes, this was like borderline, like Kendama event. Like I was like nervous, like going into this thing. Wow. And and there wasn't even like, like I said, no, like zero competition, but like um, getting like the courage to like step into like that circle, even though it was just like a small group of people. And like, I knew all of them, it was still like nerve wracking for some reason. And that was like my first, like big thing like i knew like if i can get past this like if i actually want to compete with this like i can easily do it like getting the courage to like actually go up there mm-hmm. and like play in front of people it's it's always scary but like yeah it was definitely like a like a good like confidence booster and i showed off you know whatever tricks i was doing at the time and people were super supportive and you know yeah everyone was just there everyone was awesome Dude, oh, um, so it definitely we, gave me some confidence. That's so cool, man. And we don't get that anymore, especially in COVID. It's like, we don't, we don't have that opportunity to do that kind of stuff right now. And so those kind of like, I don't know, in person, surreal, like you feel that pit in your stomach jumping into that circle. Then you hit the oh, trick yeah. and you hear the roar of people around you going like, Oh, like you, you miss that. And it's crazy. Oh, yeah. I remember witnessing that so much at live events like NACO or, you know, uh, brew battle this year. And it's like, man, I freaking thrive and love that hype. You can just feel the vibe of the room just pick up and lift up. 100%. And once you've been there, once you've been in that setting and you've stepped foot in that circle of tricks, it's like, wow, that is a feeling that is really hard to shake off. It's like you oh, get yeah. addicted to that like yeah, crazy. I've never forgotten the feeling that I had on that day. And I, I definitely got the same thing, the same fear, but also excitement. Yeah. At every single competition since then. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. I, I knew that it was, you know, that like it was just the beginning of everything. It yeah. was just cool. Okay, so we have like so many questions here and we're going to hit a power hour at the end and we're just going to run through a bunch, but let, let's Perfect. talk about what you're doing now. Outside of Kendama, you were in University of Alabama. You are, what are, you, what, what are you studying? I'm studying aerospace engineering. Aerospace engineering, you are a big space fanatic and, oh, yeah. and somehow you're also able to stay quite fit um, as everybody has noticed through the hashtag swole or... Uh, from your your clips in your dorm room, I want to talk a little bit about you know what what drew you to space, what drew you to University of Alabama, and and how do you balance all of this in your life? Because you're not just a student at University of Alabama. From my understanding, you're actually a pretty good student. You're doing really well. You want to become an astronaut. You want to you know, and that's not an easy thing to do while also doing everything else. How do you how do you do it? I need to know. I mean, for me, like I always have like tried my hardest in school, like ever since like I can remember. Um, I've always been able to like schedule the other things in my life that I like to do, including Kendama around what I do in school. So I really like hold myself to a standard of like, okay, we need, this is, I need to do this today. We've got to get this done so that I have time to do these other things that I want to do. Um, and being able to like stay organized, like that's the key thing is organization. And I really, I really try and make sure that I always do a good job of that. Um, cause like school, school definitely matters to me so much. I'm, I'm a nerd. Like I'll, I'll admit that like, uh, that's, like school is huge for me, um, especially with what I want to do in the future. Um, so just having that organization and just being able to like set plans ahead of time, know what's what I need to do on a certain day, what needs to get done by a certain point helps me plan ahead so that I know I can set some time aside to do other things like this or working out. Um, just do you actually the block organization time? is key. 
Hmm? Do you actually block time in your days to do that kind of stuff? Like, are you that rigid with your scheduling and organization that you're like, all right, these are my two hours to play Kendama. I'm going to call Micah on FaceTime and we're going to, we're going to set, you know, like, do you schedule that stuff out in your life or do you just have priorities so figured out that you're like, okay, get this done. So then I can do this. Once this is done, I'll do that. And, and you work that way. How, how do you actually organize? Yeah, I'm pretty much like, I don't usually like set aside like certain hours in the day. I really try and make sure I get everything that I need to get done finished before doing anything. Cause it, it just helps me. Like, it's kind of just like a personal thing. It helps me feel more like accomplished in the moment. Yeah. And just knowing that I don't have to worry about it later. Um, so I usually won't even like, there, there'll be certain days where I can't play Kanama as much just because I'm busy. I know I need to get stuff done. Um, mm. Just, you know, just because, uh, yeah. which is okay. Cause I know that if I do get it done early, then I can set aside more time for yeah. this and anything else. So, yeah, dude, uh, we, we had shown off Chris from Tarek and Nala on here a little bit ago, uh, a couple of weeks back, and he dropped one of the best wisdom bombs I think I've ever gotten on this show so far. And he was talking about getting your affairs in order before you play. It's like, if you're so busy thinking about the other things you're supposed to be doing while playing, you're limiting your creative potential. You're, you're not going to play as well because, you know, you're thinking about having to get the dishes done. You're thinking about, you know, I got to get my homework done, whatever it is. And it's like actually having the organization in your life to make sure you're actually getting your work done so that you can play uh, and play very focused play, man. Wow. Like I think, I think if you were to ask a lot of the top performers in Kendama or in any sport, you're going to hear that same thing over and over and over again. It's Absolutely. like, I get my other stuff done so that I can do this. It's not, I do this and then ignore all the rest of my life. Exactly. Yeah. I, I can definitely attest to that. Yeah. That's super cool. Okay, and so, so what, what year are you in in college right now? Or are you um, so this is my second year. I'm currently in my fourth uh, semester. Um, but as far as like my, um, like school credits are concerned, I'm technically like a junior. So I'm like a okay. little bit ahead of everything, but I'll end up being there for um, definitely another full two years. Cause I'm trying to uh, get my bachelor's in aerospace, but I'm also doing, they have like an accelerated master's program, okay. which I'm going to try and do as well. Um, so I should be able to get, um, I should be able to walk out in, I would say about two, maybe two and a half years from now with both a bachelor's and master's and then wow. I'll be able to start work. So what would that master's be in then? I would put in aerospace. It would just be on like a more like focused subject. I think I want to go um, uh, a bit more uh, focused with like propulsion. That's like something like a very specific aerospace topic that I've always been like super interested in. Um, and okay, I think yeah, yeah. There's yeah, a lot okay. of things I could do with it. Yeah. Tell me about space. Why, why space? Why are you so consumed by, you know, exploring the unknown? What, what ticked you off to wanting to go into space and learn and dive in and become an astronaut or I don't know, maybe that's not the, the, the terminology you would want to use, but tell, tell me why. Um, for as long as I can remember space has just like everything about it is just like completely like captured my imagination. It's just so cool. Cause we really don't know a lot about it as yeah. much as we, as much technology as we have right now, that's being used to explore it. There's still so much that we don't even know. Um, and just hearing all these great like movements that we're making right now with like SpaceX and everybody else who's trying to uh, work on like commercial space flight and not just that, but like making big uh, progression towards being able to like colonize other planets like Mars and stuff like that. Like yeah. that, that blows my mind. Just thinking that we could have people living and working on Mars in literally the next couple of years, because like, that's, that's honestly where the future I think lies the most because eventually we are going to run out of certain things here on earth um mm. certain natural resources for sure but there's definitely a lot of research being put into these other places that we could possibly like inhabit you know and yeah. like there's definitely a lot of resources that we could draw from them as well um so it'll really help like make sure that the human race i'm going like super deep into this but like, yeah, the human yeah. race can like expand and move beyond earth um and be you know the, the intelligent species that makes it for as long as we can. Yeah. Wow. That's super cool. And, and so what, what do you see as your role in that future that you see? Do you see yourself going into space and go, being one of these colonizers? You know, what, what, what do you see as your role? So like, as of now, I really just want to be a part of the, the group of people that actually work on these uh, rockets or whatever we're using to um, get people to these places. And for me, like I said, I'm super interested in like propulsion. So 
being able to work on like rocket engines is like a super cool thing that I've like always wanted to do. Um, uh, there's definitely a lot of new, uh, new like experimental ways to do that, that people are researching like nuclear powered mm. engines and stuff like there. It, it goes like pretty crazy uh, when you get really into it, but um, being able yeah, to we're, work. We're Kendama players. We, most yeah, of us don't, don't, don't like, have the depth of knowledge. To <laughs> yeah. I don't want to like make people's like brains explode, but uh <laughs> just like being able to work on something as as small as that, like in the, in the spectrum of everything else that could be going on after it would just like mean so much. Cause like I could look back on it and be like, Oh yeah, there's people riding on that rocket right now. They're going to Mars. Like I helped work on that engine. Like that'd be like so cool wow. to just say. Just yeah. Like, what a surreal thing to be able to bring to a family conversation. And yeah, be like, for real, so what did yeah. you do for work today? Well, I sent some people to Mars. <laughs> like that'd, that'd be the coolest thing i don't it's yeah stuff like that i just i geek out over it yeah for sure. oh man that's super cool do you do you want to go to space yourself then too or do you see yourself just working on engines i definitely do um like if i have the opportunity to i definitely want to yeah. um obviously i want to make sure that everything that um we have you know set in place uh to get people there is working and good there's no issues i yeah. don't want to like you know do that and have like in the back of my mind, Oh, this could go horribly wrong. I want to yeah. be able to go up there with confidence that everything is yeah. going to be okay. Um, which could totally happen in my lifetime, which is again, crazy to think about. Yeah. Totally. Um, yeah. Like, like I said, like we'll have like people doing like science and like research missions on Mars, hopefully within the next five to 10 years. And then yeah. like after that, who knows, we could have like thousands or you know, millions of people up there at one point. Like that's just, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, there, there's some cool stuff. Like, I'm, I'm by no means like an expert or, or really even versed in this at all. But from my understanding, there's some, there's some work being done by SpaceX. Uh, Elon, Elon has this idea that we can create, uh, air, you know, aerospace travel even within Earth. That basically, theoretically, I could travel anywhere on Earth in less than two hours mm -hmm. uh, using re reusable rockets. Right? They, they land on a platform just outside of the, the perimeter of the country on the sea, and then you'd boat into the country. So theoretically, yeah. I could go to China for a day trip and then come back, and yep. and it would still be the same day with with this new form of travel because you're using rocket travel rather than you know just just airplanes. Right? That yeah. changes the world economy like crazy. Because sure. all of a sudden now I can do I can do daily business in other parts of the world that that literally ground breaks our current economy system. Because yeah, exactly. right now it's like a two day turnaround or a week or jet lag or all these other things that play into effect. It's crazy yeah. to think that that not not only is it enabling us to go to other other planets, it's actually enabling our own economy to to change as well. It's so cool. Yeah, it's it's super cool. Okay, just so about it, it's just dope. So if, if, fun question here, maybe I, I'm curious, have you thought about doing tricks on other planets and, and the, the different style of play that you'd be able to implement by being on the moon or <laughs> Mars because of the gravity, like yeah. hucking a cloud bounce. <laughs> it would probably go boing, boing, boing. Like it would just yeah, be yeah, yeah. doing this over and over again. The infinite cloud bounce. Yeah. It's a trick that no one's been able to do yet. <laughs> yeah. No, do, you, do you ever dream about some... that? Oh yeah. Like, I was I've always thought about like what it would be like to play Kendama like on the moon the gravity is so different it's only like a sixth of the the strength um as the gravity that we have here on earth just based on the moon size yeah. um well, th so. there was a guy right uh um what's his name uh who brought a Kendama onto a space station and um what what's his name Chris uh is it Chris oh, I can't remember. he's the yeah, Canadian it, it's, guy it's, the Canadian. Yeah. I'm trying to remember his last name oh someone in the he, chat let us yeah know. someone remind remind me yeah please. we need to know we're, we're testing our space knowledge and i have very little of it <laughs> but no I, I have seen the video I've, I've seen that and i was sad because i wanted to be the first one to do that but like oh hey you know what fine. yeah <laughs> there was a canadian he didn't know any better he'll just apologize <laughs> cool no um, that's fine it was just cool to see yeah. Okay. So, so we talk a little bit about space here, uh, some of your direction. That's so cool. And you're still able to find that balance of Kendama space and you're actually integrating that together. Um, talk to me a little bit about your workout routine. I got, do you, you don't even know how many DMs and messages and comments I've gotten about, ask him about his workout routine. We need to know. Uh, and so the people want to know, Liam, how are you able to stay so fit while doing everything else you're doing? What's your, what's your strap? What are you um, drinking? What pills are you taking? <laughs> um, so I'll preface this by saying that I'm all natural. There's no, there's no steroids or anything. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if anyone's worried about that, but I'm just wanting I, to I was. throw that out there. Um, <laughs> but um, basically, I, um, 
I didn't even really start like working out or doing anything like that until, um, let's see, it was the beginning of last year, actually. Um, and I don't want to go like too, too deep into this because like I, I started doing it just based on like some like inse- like personal insecurities with me and just like other stuff that was happening in my life at the time. But I knew that um, I could definitely make some changes if I, if I do exactly what I did with Kendama and I put time aside to work on this and make myself mm. better, then I'll see a difference. And so I just kept that in mind, like, cause I've always been like such a, like a skinny kid basically throughout my whole life. Um, but I knew again, with, with hard work, you can do anything. So yeah. I throughout that entire year, pretty much. And even through like quarantine, I always made sure to work out at least a, I would try and do like an hour and a half every day. If I could, it got weird. Um, being back here, um, after school was uh, uh, put to an unexpected halt because of, you know, COVID and everything. Um, because at school I have all these great like workout places and gyms that I can go to. And I still do. Um, but coming back here and having everything be closed, it was hard. Um, so I um, kind of made like a, like a makeshift gym here at my house. We had like some logs in the backyard and I would like cut those up and like make weights out of them. Um, yeah, well. And I kind of just, you know, made the most out of what I had. Um, but I've been doing that for, um, up until now. So just a little bit more than a year. Um, yeah. I don't know how specific you want me to go into like what I do. Um, yeah. But, like, no, I, that's I like, love that though. Yeah. I, I am curious though. You, you were saying that like you, you have this propensity to be able to just put your mind to something and then do it. Where does that come from for you? Like, did you, what was that support like in your home? Did you, did your parents just, you know, instill this idea that you can achieve anything and that you've just never, you know, what, what do you do when barriers come up in your life? Like that, that's a men- mental resiliency that a lot of people don't have. And I think that's so, so important. How do you yeah. do it? Like, where, where does that come from? Um, my parents are definitely a huge um, inspiration as far as all that stuff goes. They always tell me, you know, you're smart, you're perfectly capable of doing whatever you want, as long as you put your mind to it. And them also saying that they'll support me no matter what, like that Mm. means so much to me, just like knowing that like, no matter what I do, I'll always have someone to like back me up. And so it was, I was never, you know, scared to like pursue things like Kendama or anything, because I knew they were, you know, they would always be there. And and as long as I put in the work that I knew I could, you know, actually make a difference. So it wasn't really any different transitioning from what I was already doing with Kendama into like fitness and stuff like that. Yeah. So here, here's the crazy thing that, that I see in, in your life is that you were achieving or have achieved, you know, certain things in your life that most people consider very difficult to achieve. And, and you've done so in multiple categories. You know, you're, you're in school, you're performing at a really high, high level in school. Uh, you're, you're one of the best players in the world at Kendama. You've won a series of, of competitions. You, you're a fit and very capable person. You're, you're incredibly intelligent, all of these things. And, and it's not limited to one thing. You know, a lot of us in life just want to be successful in one thing, but you're, you're doing really well in a number of categories. And, and I'm just curious, like, do you have, you know, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how to ask this necessarily, but like, man, what, what do you do when a barrier comes up in your life? Or have you ever, have you ever felt inadequate compared to other things? Like what, I don't know, like, what, what are some of the fears you have there? Um, I've definitely had some major like roadblocks just come up just in life in general. Um, and it, it definitely it kind of throws you through a loop. You kind of don't know how to handle it. Like when, when everything is going so well and then something completely unexpected uh, just comes in and kind of changes everything. You really don't yeah. know what to do in the moment, but um, anytime something like that's happened, I make sure number one, that I'm okay with whatever's happening. Um, and, really start to plan okay how can i like make a comeback no because it could be anything it could be something yeah. in relationships it could be something in school it, it really could be anything um that just kind of you know, throws some unexpected changes into what's going on but um i've always been like a, a go with the flow kind of guy and like i've i've gotten through a lot of things just by just take like rolling with the punches and mm-hmm. figuring out how to take those changes and use them to my advantage um and so, I mean, there's, I mean there's really, like, just keeping that mindset has just helped so much with things like that. Um, and definitely has helped me like, become like who I am today. I, I know that as long as I keep a level head and don't let things get to my head, that everything will be okay. And that um, I can make, I can make something good happen out of something that seems like horrible. 
Yeah. Wow. Wow. That is, I, that I is a mindset like deep into stuff, but like, no, yeah. man, I, I love that. And, and one of the things like I was talking to people going into battle at the border, I was like, I, I was really rooting for you in particular, not, not for any other reason, but, but the story that's at play, like you, you had played up against Nick Gallagher in the finals of, I don't know how many competitions and you like, not, not I don't mean this in a mean sense, but like you had con consistently been beat by him in, in a yeah. finals match coming second to Nick, coming second to Nick, coming second to Nick. And I was like, man, he just keeps showing up though. He doesn't, he doesn't back down. He's still there. He's still fighting and he wants to beat Nick so bad. Like, and he's there. And, and Nick is like undeniably one of the best players in the world, if not oh, the, the best, best player in the world, right? Yeah, and you have sure. consistently showed up. You haven't ever entered into any, from what I've seen, you've never entered into one of those matches being like, ah, I'm up against Nick again. It's, it's, it's over. You've, you've showed up saying like, no, I've practiced these tricks. I'm here to compete and I'm going to show up. And I, I was nervous for you because coming into the finals, you were actually in the advantage, uh, right? You, and then you ended up losing the first set to five and then you ended up winning it in the end at Battle of the Border. And what a story that was, right? That, that not only did you win, but you came back even after a loss in the finals when I think a lot of people would have thrown in the towel at that point. And that's just a testament to, I think, so much of this development in your life of this propensity to actually accept challenges and defeat them, to come up against them and, and keep going. And For sure, man, yeah. I, oh man, if, if we could just take that from, from Liam's brain and put that into everybody else, wow, we'd have a crazy world ahead of us. We'd have a really cool future for, for humanity. <laughs> wow that is so cool man and and i think that's that's really humbling to see in someone and what you're you're 21 now 22 i'm 20 20 20 yeah. at 20 years old like that that's nuts you're not gonna see that in many people and so man let me let me just encourage you keep that up don't ever quit that keep that mindset in everything you do and you will continue to achieve things i think that's so important to realize absolutely okay Thank uh, you. i i could i could pump Pump, pump more air into your head if you'd like, but uh, let's let's skip skip past that process yeah. here, and, and let's jump into to uh, a couple of the questions here. And and before we do, uh, I do want to ask about your pro mod. So I wish I had one with your Ken on it. I've swapped out some of the Kens because I've played them so so much. But yeah, you you got you have your your pro mod now that was a pretty surreal experience to get a pro mod i'm sure oh uh, yeah talk to me a little bit about the design now i know people can go back and watch your video and, and walk through it a little bit but you have a couple different design elements on there uh, why don't you talk me through it a bit yeah um i'll start with the ken i guess um i'll kind of just be going over like what i talk about in the in the video if you go watch it on yeah. youtube but um so it's uh you might go to see in the big cup i have this is my little um little ode to spacex right here this is yeah it's, it might be hard to tell just by yeah, looking yeah, yeah. At this but um that right there is um starman uh which was the basically the the spacesuit mannequin that elon uh basically when they started working on this uh one rocket up there it's called the falcon heavy uh some of you guys might know about it they wanted to not they wanted to basically go about testing it in a way that would get people excited about the future of space basically yeah so and what what just going into things a little bit more, what space companies will normally do when they're testing a rocket, um, they want to make sure that the rocket can carry a certain uh, weight, uh, as in like a payload to like to orbit, yeah. to make sure that everything works. Um, and so normally what they do is they'll use something like a block of like cement, usually just like a big enough block of cement to kind of simulate what that weight could look like. Yeah. But Elon uh, being, being Elon, he was yeah. like, nah, let's make this exciting. So I'm going to, I'm going to take my, my personal car, my, my Tesla Roadster, and we're going to stick yeah. this spacesuit mannequin in it. And we're going to put it on this really nice mount, and we're going to have plaques all over it with all of the current SpaceX employees on it. Wow. And send it up in this rocket. So, um, so they had <laughs> this just ridiculous launch. So like it was, there, there it was, was a so Tesla cool Roadster. To is, it, is it still in space, that Roadster? I, think, I don't think so at this point, because they did that launch, and it was at the very end of 20, I want to say um, – See, I'd have been at the very end of 2018. Oh, yeah, I, I, I hope I'm not getting that wrong. It, it was either 2018 or 2019 when they did yeah. their first Falcon Heavy launch, but they basically sent it on a journey around the sun, and then it actually came back to Earth, um, I think, and re-entered. Um, I don't know. I honestly don't know what happened uh, yeah. to it afterwards, but I know that that was how they wanted to go about testing things, um, and so they, they used that just, just for fun and just to get people so excited. Cool. Um and then moving on to the small cup, this was kind of my little tribute to like uh, old space history. So I have the, the Saturn V rocket that hopefully everybody 
has at least seen before because that was the rocket that we used to use to um, get people to the moon. The Apollo program was huge mm -hmm. in the spectrum of like space history because that was definitely where we made a lot of the biggest jumps um, as far as all that stuff goes. Um, mm -hmm. So I definitely wanted to make sure I had like a little something to salute, you know, yeah. to give a little salute to them. Um, and then on the bottom, I thought this would just be cool. And I, yeah. Chad thought this would be really cool too, to just have my name. I'm not sure if it's like mirrored. Yeah, the, it is. But, the thing, but, yeah, but, the... yeah, but you get the idea. So I have my name in the, the NASA font. Um, one of the logos they have has that yeah, same font. Uh, which is the fire, fire logo. I think that looked really cool. And it, it's a very all encapsulating mod. Like it's not a bunch of random things put together. It, you can very much tell what it's themed after. Yeah, no, I, I, I threw home so. Um, so I think that's, uh, and then of course you got the soul. Yeah. on the back um so that's pretty much all for the ken and then moving on to the tama so i'll talk about like the colors first um so i wanted to start i wanted to basically create like a like a night sky uh spectrum mm -hmm. or like what you would see as if you were uh, uh lifting off into space so you have like this bottom layer right here uh mm -hmm. white um and that's supposed to basically symbolize like the earth's like atmosphere and like clouds and stuff like that yeah, yeah. um and then you so once you get past that you kind of have like this deep blue fading up to basically almost black it's like a, a deep yeah. purple right at this point um and that's supposed to just kind of be like the sky as you see it gets darker yeah. and darker the farther out you get um and then um i had to put the orange on top number one just because um soul sun that's like our color yeah but um it, it made sense because like that's the sun like you, you it's, yeah. it's there it's in space um it's also very nasa like right like the colorway yeah. uh they that's this is the same color as the um the external tank that they would use on the space shuttle, even yeah. though we don't use that anymore. Um, and they use it on like their space suits and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so I kept that pretty coherent and then I had to have the orange string to go with it just cause I thought it looked really nice. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that launched at, uh, NACO 19, right? Yes. That was, that yeah. Was... Cause I remember picking one up. I got knocked out in my first round using whatever mod I was using before. And I was like, ah, let me just use this freshie. And then I won like six <laughs> matches in a, in a row. I was like, yeah. all right, I'm sold. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> So yeah, okay. I, I really like the mod. It's it's a solid one. I've definitely purchased a couple since, so it's it's definitely one of my go tos. That's fine. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. Do you want me to talk about like the? Yeah, uh, talk to me about the text there. So this um, this saying right here, um, "Gradatum Ferocitor." It's a uh, it's a Latin phrase, and it's actually the company um, slogan or motto or whatever you want to call it for um, uh, Blue Origin. If you've seen my blue yeah. tank top, that's the company on there. Yeah, that's um, uh, Jeff Bezos' company, right? Yeah, Jeff Bezos' uh, private aerospace company. Um, and they this is their exact same company uh, motto, I guess. And it translates to step-by-step step ferociously. That's like the literal translation. Um, and it's cool because that's like a – that's like literally a phrase about like progression, step-by-step yeah. step progression. And that's exactly how you treat Kendama, just in little steps. Yeah. So like I figured that would be like the perfect right? thing yeah, to have on improvement. here. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, oh that's man, that's so cool. It. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, if you were to change anything on your mod, maybe you aren't, but what would be the thing that you'd want to add if you were to redesign it or, or change, or would you completely redo it differently? Okay. So I'm, I'm going to say this now. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be saying this, but um, we, I have talked um, about a couple little changes that we might make in the future. Um, definitely experimenting with some new colors. Uh, Maybe not changing the entire design. I'll definitely be leaving a lot of the things the same just mm -hmm. because I love how this turned out. Um, it, it came out way better than I thought it would, to be honest. But um, there's definitely going to be some color changes, maybe a few new um, wood burn logos. Might be taking away a few and adding some new ones. Um, cool. And that's still in the works. I really haven't done too much. Um, but definitely expect something good in the near cool, future. Cool. All right, I want to ask like maybe two or three more questions from me, and then let's hammer through a bunch of these these questions from the the chat. There's so many of them. There's some really good ones in there. Yeah, that's uh, right. I want to know if you were offered a job, the the dream job from from any you know whatever the job is that you really want. Which company would you want to work for within the, the aerospace industry? Blue Origin, uh, you know SpaceX, NASA. Who would you want to who do you want to work for? Um, and why? Yeah. Um, I would say like any of the, the private um, companies uh, being like SpaceX, uh, Blue Origin, um, Virgin is actually, they have two aerospace. Oh, yeah. I forgot about they Virgin. have Virgin Galactic, which is, um, they're working on like space planes, which is a completely different thing, but it's so cool. Um, definitely, I obviously wouldn't be upset if I got a job there. Uh, and then they have another uh, group called Virgin Orbit, um, which is, 
it's the way that they do things is kind of crazy. They literally strap a rocket to the bottom of um, uh, a Boeing 747's wing. And they take, they fly it up there, and then they drop the rocket, and it just shoots out. And then that's how they get to orbit. Wow. Like the way that, like, it's fun. It's really cool just to like see how every company has a completely different take and a different method and like how they want to do things. Yeah. But it's all, it's all for the same goal and for the same purpose. So I really wouldn't be upset at like if I got a job at any of those as opposed to another because it's, it's all just so yeah. mind blowing and cool to me. Cool. Uh, and then last but not least, what I want to ask before we jump into these questions is what do you see as the next, you know, three years for you with Kendama, with life, with school? I know you said you wanted to, to finish your schooling and get your master's and that's about a two and a half roadmap from here, two and a half years. Uh, but where do you want to be in Kendama three years from now? And maybe that'll actually kind of lead into the next question as well of like, where do you see Kendama in three years competitively and, and all that? Um, so I'll, I'll say this now. Um, just like as a, uh, just a heads up to everybody. I know at some point I'm not going to be able to keep doing this forever. I know I'm going to have like a, a huge responsibility as like an engineer one day. Um, and it, it takes a lot of work and a lot of time set aside to be able to do that. So I'm, I'm sadly not going to be able to do this forever. And I've kind of realized that, but I hope to always keep Kendama in my life at some, you know, mm. in some way, however I can. Um, and I think I'll, I'll definitely be able to do that. Cause this is like such a big, like stress relief like above anything else. this is like my like therapy, like when I need it the most mm -hmm. school, like school is getting stressful now. And this is like my escape from all of it. So I'm definitely going to keep this in my life in some form, even if I'm not sponsored or anything. Um, Kanama is never going to leave my life. Um, and then as far as how I think Kanama will be in the next couple of years, I hope it doesn't change too much because I love where we are right now with it. Um, being able to like, as weird as it is doing online competitions, it's really cool because you have such a huge turnout and like people from places mm -hmm. that wouldn't normally be able to come to actual events can actually do it and get a competition experience, which I think is really cool. And I hope that we still do that. But at the same time, I'm really hoping for some larger scale in-person events to actually, you know, come back and yeah. um, make everything seem a little more normal. Um, yeah. So I, I hope nothing too much uh, changes as far as that goes. And I just know that every company is just going to keep, grinding out those new shapes and I'm cool to see like what everyone else is going to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm just excited for all that. Okay. Let, let's fire some, through some questions here. Uh, actually related to what you just said there from the Kendama boys, uh, boys spelled B O I S uh, wants to know what new innovations in Kendama design will be next. You know, the next big thing, maybe a modular Ken concept with interchangeable cups, ring stalls, spikes, bevels. Mm. What do you see as some ways to improve Kendama? I love that idea, actually, having like a modular type of thing where everything is literally like interchangeable. Yeah, like, something like that. I'm not sure like how to go about that the best way because with like screws and stuff, you'd be adding a lot of unnecessary weight. Yeah. I wonder, I'm PVC, starting to think, maybe. Yeah, I wonder if there'd be like a way to have like some kind of like locking thing where you could, it's literally just like pieces of wood where you could literally just take off certain parts in a certain way and then like lock them uh, together somehow, right? I yeah, I've never you, really considered that, but that would be really cool to like experiment, and, like mess yeah. with like weights and see like what helps the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a three part tom or something where you could have uh, you know, oh, your beach be nice. beach bottom, you know, bamboo yeah. middle, whatever it is. You know, so you cool. Play around with it. Yeah. I, I think definitely something like that should be uh explored. And if no one else does it, I definitely will. Yeah, yeah. That'd be super so cool. cool. Yeah, I think that's a cool idea. But do you have any ideas of, of what, what you might want to see next for Kanama design? Or any Kendama designs out there right now that you're like, whoa, that's really innovative and cool. I'm trying to think because everyone out there has a completely different like take on the on their own shapes and everything. And a lot of yeah. things, you know, a lot of shapes work in their own ways. Um, just by being so different in like appearance and like uh, yeah. size and you know everything that you take into consideration. Um, that's a yeah. question. I don't really know to be honest. Um, yeah, what, one of my most recent uh, discoveries of like a new innovation is the the new Jared Porter mod. I don't know if you've seen it, but he's got like the triple bevel going on in there. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got the first dip, then the second dip, and then it really narrows down at the bottom. So you can still hold your J sticks down at like a, you know, a sub, sub 90 like degree. Fall out, it doesn't yeah. really fall out, but the bevel is so wide that it's hard to miss a spike. You know, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. It takes a little while to wear in, but it's a, it's a cool little innovation that's, that's new that I haven't really seen done on other Kanamas right now. Yeah. But. I think I might, I might be a bad person to like ask that question too. Cause I'm honestly like, so like biased and like blind to like yeah. 
other shapes because like this is my favorite shape that yeah, i've ever played yeah the one up is sure. like i and again i'm completely biased but it's just so good with like everything like i see it as in my mind as like the perfect shape um yeah. and i re just don't see anything wrong with it and i like i don't know like what should be changed about it i definitely want to yeah. like experiment more with it but like yeah there's definitely nothing wrong with it the way i see it yeah okay uh let's quick fire through a few of these questions um mar dylan asks what is your least favorite but oh, somewhat consistent boy. trick Ooh. yeah he He's a rad guy, a rad lad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, like, wait, wait, did you say least consistent trick? Least or? favorite, but somewhat consistent. So it's kind of like, oh. you know, it's a trick you're really good at, but you probably don't like. Got it. Ooh, that's, I'm need to think about this for a second. Uh, um, do you I love stilts? I like stilts. I, I've always liked stilts. Um, <sighs> I think I've always been at least. Decent, not i'm no nick gallagher at stilts he's mind-blowing at them but like i'll always throw them in i'll always make sure i throw a stilt trick up on my feet every now and then yeah um that's like a hard question i really like for me i really try and make sure that i'm like well-rounded at like a lot of things um and it's hard to like think about like stuff that i don't like because i i always love to try and incorporate as many new and like different tricks as i can into anything i don't really have like a a trick that i dislike i would say that's fair um that uh, well i'll put it this way a trick that i dislike that i'm also bad at because like there are some tricks like turntables i'm not really good at. i don't really like care to do those too much um and especially after seeing people like Madi hit like hundreds <laughs> of them like, it's, just it's a little, little discouraging but like you ask Madi, how do you do what you do and he just goes I just just spins his yeah. thing. I, I don't know. I just not like a like a least favorite necessarily, to be honest. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Um let's let's skip that one then and let's go to uh Piper's Piper's Five wants to know what are the players you did and still are looking up to, or when you can't think of a trick, what player is the most inspiring? You know, what who's who's a player that gets you out of a rut? Got it. That's a great question. Um as I said before, I can always I can always count on Kevin for some inspiration because yeah. um, he's very innovative with his style and always loves to mix it up. Um, and then obviously you have Ben Harold. Ben Harold has been, especially since the fringe case days started, like Kendama has made some huge jumps in like the, the types of tricks you see. And yeah. I was definitely wanting to get on that wave as much as I could with um, all the crazy, you know, late goon tricks, string tension tricks, all yeah. that stuff is just so cool to me. And I know that just just by going through his Instagram, just doing a deep dive, yeah, you'll find there's so something, like, at least something small, even if it's small, I'll find something that I can, you know, have fun with yeah. and mess around with for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, he's always on some. Oh, Dude, that he, guy. He, he's on a completely different. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, um, a little bit differently than mine does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fun question here from James World Jones. Do you believe in aliens? I do. Do you? I, okay. I completely do. 100%. Why? Convince the, me. Okay, the, just think about this. We, our galaxy in the spectrum of the universe is so small. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know the size like off the top of my head, but it, in the spectrum of everything else, and from what I know, I haven't gone too far into this myself, but I just know that there are literally millions and millions of other galaxies out there. It's hard to imagine the fact that we are the only, on this planet, we are the only body in the entire universe that actually has life on it. Mm. Like it's it's so hard to like so so you're you're not saying it from like a point of like oh yeah i know that there's aliens out there you're saying it's like there's there's so much it's out there totally that I don't probably know yeah like, that like it's there's no like, way for us to know because they could be you know millions of light years away from us but yeah. like it's it's totally a possibility and like we, we obviously haven't like seen any proof of it yet but i definitely think that there could be if we really like if we're able to get out there and find something i'm sure like i would not be surprised if we did find something that i'll just say that yeah yeah uh, so do you, do you do you think if you were to make a guess do you think we're ahead of those other civilizations if they're if they exist or are we way behind you know should we be afraid I mm, that's tough I feel like there could be some that are more advanced than us but there also could be some more like primitive ones that aren't necessarily that far yet it's just hard to know because the universe is it's very old um, it's hard to know where everything you know where everything uh, stands as far as like history yeah i don't i don't, I don't think I have enough knowledge to answer that question uh i definitely think that there definitely you know there could be some that are 
more advanced than us, which which is kind of scary to think about, but mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's cool to think about more than anything. Like yeah. there really, there really could be something else out there. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Uh, let's hit a couple more questions here now from the chat. We've gone through most of them from the posts. Uh, we might jump back to one or two there. Uh, we got a question from Sam Doc Kramer. He wants to know whose soul vibe is your favorite? Ooh. And you can't pay. pick your own. Okay, can't pick my own. Um, I wasn't going to say that my own anyways, because I, um, who is it? Uh, I'm really torn between um, Alex's vibe, the Tozai, and um, Ayumu's vibe, the Ringmaster. Yeah, Those the Ringmaster is so nice. I just love how he used the same colors that he used in the uh, the Mumu copy yeah. Dama, uh in that one too, and how they just look so nice in just a simple Dude. stripe pattern. Yep. So clean. It, it's just so nice. And like the off white, that's such a cool color on a Kendama. Yeah. Um, so his, and then Alex's, um, it, it, it's really simple. I like ones that are like, that have a lot of like natty in the, mm -hmm. in the, you know, underneath the paint. Yeah. But the colors that he chose, like that deep maroon and then that like cyan color, they go like, they go so well together. And I love what he did with it. So I'd yeah. say it's definitely between those two for me. Yeah. Okay. We got a, we got a space related question from total control. In Liam's opinion, is Pluto really a planet? And don't refer to my boy as a dwarf. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to. It, it is what it is. I think it's a dwarf planet. Okay, but you would I, call I, it I would a planet. say not, well, it, not an official planet. Because dwarf planet, I guess, doesn't technically count as one. It I really see. is more of a big rock than anything. It's like it's it's almost there, but not quite there. I'm sorry if that disappoints anybody. How, but... So how big is Pluto actually? Like, How long would it take to walk a lap around it? Um, it's, I'm trying to think. It's smaller than let's see, let's see, I can compare it to I know it's somewhat similar in size to the moon I want to say it's a little bit bigger someone please correct me if I'm wrong but um it, I yeah, would say it's around space experts in the chat let us yeah. know <laughs> I, I, the, the thing is I don't know too much about like the planets like themselves and like you know stuff like yeah. that but um I would it's definitely smaller than Earth, right? And I can say that for sure, but yeah. I know it's not too far off from the moon. Okay. But, um, definitely not quite a a if, the, if the moon isn't a planet, then Pluto definitely isn't one. I'll just okay. I'll say that. Yeah. Interesting. But, but the logic there, you know, like the moon is in orbit around a planet, but Pluto isn't necessarily in orbit around another planet. So it's, it's a little bit different, right? Yeah. So yeah. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm not sold yet. I'm not yet. <laughs> Hold no for my boy so Pluto. I'm not the best person to ask about that stuff, to be honest. <laughs> no, I, I, I get you. I get you. Okay. Uh, Sulkin Damas wants to know, what has been your favorite Dama trip slash weekend? Okay. And I, <laughs> They're going to know exactly what I'm going to say, too. Um, so this wasn't even for um, an official, like, event or anything. But we had a weekend back in um, August of – or I guess it was either late July or early August of uh, this past year where – uh, who was it? Chad and his brother Shelton. Uh, and he's one of the other geniuses behind Soul. For those that Dude. don't know, yeah, people um, need to know Shelton. I'm, yeah, my goal is to get Shelton on the review in 2021. Name as possible because he he does so much. He does just as much as Chad does for the company. He, yeah, super important. Um, but it was him and Chad and me and Alex. We went on like a a little weekend trip to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Which, mm -hmm. for those who don't know, that's where um, oh, Grand yeah. Theory and RWB got started. Um, we passed by, like, where, you know, they got started and everything. Uh, we're all pretty local. local. I, it, you know, in the spectrum of things to that area. So we, 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 we know, like, how things are there. Um, but we basically just did, like, a, a boys trip that weekend just for, just for fun before we all went back to school and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and we just had so much fun just exploring Chattanooga. We filmed a little uh, weekend edit that's on the soul youtube if you guys want to check it out shameless mm -hmm. plug um but that was just fun just being able to kick back and not have to worry about like competing for anything not worrying about having to practice for something but just being able to you know just spend time together and just you know help me out mm -hmm. you know? it was fun and it was definitely a good escape from everything else that was going on in the world with like quarantine and stuff like that mm -hmm. it was fun for sure yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Bad at Ball Stick wants to know, Soul Sesh under the Saturn V? I'm going to make it happen at some point. Yeah, where, where actually is it uh, right now? Is it hung up somewhere? Um, they, I'm trying to think. I know that they have pieces of it at certain museums. I can't remember for the life of me which ones, but I, I would assume probably the National Air and Space Museum has got to yeah. have something. Have you been um, there? I haven't actually. I've not. I'm, 
Wow. Like I'm, I might look bad for saying this being like the space nerd that I am, but I have never been to like a major like aerospace museum in you my life. That happen, man. I'm, I'm definitely going to, cause there's plenty of things in Alabama by itself that I could easily go to. I just haven't had the chance to yet. But um, what's funny is that actually when you're driving from here, my house uh, straight down South to school, one of the first things you see after you go over um, the, the Tennessee Alabama border um, going down uh, I-65, that's the, the interstate that takes me down there, is a huge model of the Saturn V at this rest stop, like on the way down there. So it's, you literally look over and you see this giant model rock. And I, I think it's true to size. Is that what, is that what Bad at Ballstick is talking about in Huntsville? Is that Tennessee? Uh, Huntsville is in uh, Alabama and, and they, no, you know what they do? They do have He's saying they have the full there. rocket there. That's yeah, what, they that's do. What yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I haven't been to that one either. Um, but yeah, they, like I said, they have like a model of one at this yeah. one rest stop going down from Tennessee into Alabama. So I see yeah. it every time. Um, we're going to go start cool. a GoFundMe to get Liam to Huntsville to film a Kanama edit under the Saturn V. So let's make it happen. Uh, we'll stay, it. stay tuned for the GoFundMe link afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Let's, let's hit a couple more here. Uh, we got one from, oh man, I'm not going to be able to pronounce your name here. N-G-U-Y-N Damas, Nguyen Damas, maybe. That could be totally off. Wants to know, Liam, uh, any advice on leveling up to get to the next level besides the obvious of grinding? Because, you know, that's the, that's the like tongue in cheek answer. Everybody says, just, just keep practicing, keep yeah. doing the work. But do you have any little uh, tips or strats for getting a new trick or up, upping your level? Um, I would say first and foremost, just get inspired. Find somebody who has a play style that you like and that you think you could not copy necessarily, but kind of incorporate into your own style. That's what I've definitely done with, again, people like Kevin and Ben Harold. Um, mm -hmm. and plenty of other people just looking for little elements of their style or stuff that they're working on that you could also be working on yeah. and then figuring out how to add your own personal twist on it. Um, I would say that like, that's like the key thing if you're trying to like level up and try and like experiment with more yeah. things. Cause I think that's what like leveling up is, is familiarizing your, yourself, not just getting better at a certain trick, but in increasing your like vocabulary, like your trick yeah. vocabulary. So for you, being at, at near the top of the game, uh, you pretty much can do most most every trick. I'm sure there's still tricks out there, but I, I'd imagine it's harder for you to think of new tricks because you're at the top. You're you're quote unquote one of the innovators of Kendama now because you're at the top. Uh, do you find that harder to level up because you don't really know what's next? Do you have to kind of create what's next? It, it can get hard. Sometimes I'll definitely hit some inspiration kind of roadblocks. Um, but I, I just know if, if I, if I deep dive enough, I can it, like, and it might mean going back into you know, Kendama like history and just like seeing, cause people mm -hmm. were experimenting with all kinds of stuff, even back in the early days. And yeah. some of it is just forgotten Like you have to just deep dive and go back like the first, yeah. and this is tying into like some of like new style, uh, play too. But like the first, like, uh, thing that was similar to a cloud bounce was done back in 2015. Yeah. Um, um, and the trick didn't even really become popular um until you know just recently really um but people were doing them back then so if you there that if that's like a testimony to go back dive into some kanama history there's do something your history. you can find yeah yeah, yeah. Do, do, your do, your do your homework research yeah yeah exactly for sure okay uh from gem dama he wants to know what's your favorite body part to work out Ooh, uh definitely not legs because i do just feel dead afterwards yeah, do, uh, what, for your legs, though, do, you even, do you even do leg workouts or does Kanama fill that void for you? No, I definitely need to do some leg workouts. Like there's only so much squatting that you actually do in Kanama. I'm sure there is some that, you know, it definitely, it probably helps, but um, doing like weighted squats and like, you, like actual leg exercises does help a lot. Um, it doesn't feel good when you do it. Like I, like leg days are never fun. You can ask any person <laughs> that's like into bodybuilding or weight nobody weight. likes feeling like they can't walk afterwards exactly and it's it's just exhausting because like your legs ha alone have like so much muscle in them compared to the rest of your body so you're using those it's going to wear you out like for sure but um yeah as much as i hate doing them it's it's really important but i would say like my favorite thing to work out would probably be like either chest or like shoulders yeah I, in my opinion those are like my weak points i think those are things that i really try and push the most to try and work on and I, I enjoy doing it so yeah 
Yeah. Cool. Um, Brett Walters, uh, Boston W on Instagram, Patreon supporter as well of the Brewview, wants to know what PPK items would you be bringing into space? I don't even know what a PPK, PPK? item is. Yeah, what is a, Brett, what is a PPK educate item? Me. Yeah, educate us. Uh, but okay, what items, if you, if you had a little packing list of n the non-essentials, if you, if you could bring three things on, onto a spaceship with you as you go to Mars, what three things would you bring? Uh, one of these. Yeah, of course. Um, Let's see. Three things. Hmm. So you got two more here. Got to bring a camera. You already know I'm going to be filming a trick. Uh, don't know how that's going to work <laughs> being weightless, yeah. but um, got to film a trick. Um, so Dama camera. And... What I need to like I know that they would probably have that on there already. Um, yeah. I don't know. The only thing on my that I know for sure would be on my mind was is I got to do a trick. I got to film a trick right now. Yeah. I got to have my camera. <laughs> I got to be ready. I got to do. Liam, this. we need you on Mars right now. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm halfway through a session. I really got to waste this. It's for the boys. <laughs> Let me hit infinite cloud bounce real quick. What, are you going to be FaceTiming Micah from up there? You know, doing doing your sessions. Hey. Yeah. it's funny because like with um uh, going back to like what spacex is doing they're working on like a full constellation of like um i don't know if you've heard of the starlink uh thing that yeah. they're doing where yeah. you'll be able to have like uh global um internet connection from anywhere and yeah. like even in space too um so i could if you could if be all that's up and running i could literally have mike on facetime with me yeah. and do it a trick up there which is it's really cool to think about yeah Okay, let's hit maybe two more questions. We've been going here for almost an hour and a half. This is one of the longest episodes to date, but it's been a great one. I'm loving it. Uh, Domasoul420 wants to know, when are the Liam mods going to restock? When can we scoop? All right, good question. I don't know the exact details. We are going to have one within, uh, should be the next, I don't want to get this wrong, hopefully the next month or two or so. But And the reason why it's going to take a little bit for this one is we're, this is going to be the biggest restock of all pro models. It's not just mine. It's, it's all the pro models, uh, yeah. but it is going to be the biggest. Okay. So on the comment, three to four yes. weeks, guys, three less four than weeks. a month. So yeah, and if you're Canadian, be... if you're Canadian, I'm going to try and get them up on, on the site. Cause I got a bunch of Liam's here with me. So we're going to get those up for the Canadian homies in the next uh, probably week or two, hopefully. Perfect. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be the biggest restock of all the pro models um, that we've had. Um, so no one should have to worry about anything selling out right away. You'll have plenty of time to scoop. Um, we should have some for hopefully, hopefully a little while. I know that they sometimes go pretty quick depending on how many we have, but this one should uh, probably last a little bit. Yeah. So. All right. Two more. One is a comment and then one is a question and then we'll wrap it up there for the Brew of You season two, episode six with Liam Router. Uh, Carter Justice 101. See, Justy, Carter. he just wants to tell you that you and him are wearing the same sweatshirt right now. So, Oh, yeah. Shout out, shout out to the homies. Misguided. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, tell me about Always Misguided. Is that a sponsorship? Um, it, I don't know if it. I don't think it technically counts as a sponsorship. It's basically um, for those who don't know, um, the person or the awesome dude behind this brand, Gavin Jorgensen, up in uh, Minnesota. He started this uh, clothing company, little brand, uh, back earlier last year. I want to say I don't want to. Again, I don't want to get this wrong, but it seems I think he got it started like early last year. Um, and he's been putting out some cool stuff. It's more, I think I would consider it like streetwear type of thing, yeah. but um, it's still pretty small and he's sending stuff out to just some homies. It's not like a official sponsorship, but he has like a, a group of guys that um, he sends stuff to. He always hooks it up. He's a super awesome guy. Um, makes some cool stuff. So definitely yeah. check him out always, at always.misguided, I think on instagram go check them out dude so. shout out to all the all the startup kanama clothing brands that are out there i remember back in the day when dama clothing was so awkward and like it was uncomfortable to wear it outside it was of like kanama cringe event. almost like it's, yeah. I, I feel bad saying that but it was like at the beginning no one you don't want to like i don't know people people you would definitely get some weird looks if you wore that kind of stuff yeah yeah but, but <laughs> now dude the the clothing brands that are out there like maybe sunday always misguided Oh yeah. Uh, well, what else is even out there now? Right now, there's another one I'm thinking about. Uh, oh, there's one in Canada. I'm I'm forgetting the name of it right now. Cursed Cursed Ken Club. They got some. Oh yeah. Stuff. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's some really good ones that are coming up where that they just have dope streetwear. And Jared Porter yeah. as well. He's got his Clothe the World. Clothe the World. It's not yeah. really a. 
it's not technically a Kendama brand, but it's got some fire street wear there. And they did a collab with uh, Tara recently on a, on a hoodie that has like yeah, yeah. Dama straps on the hoodie itself, which is kind of cool. Wait, really? Yeah. It's so got cool. like, you can, you can bag really four cool. Damas on you. That's so cool. Well, that, that's like a really good idea too. I'm definitely gonna have to look at one of those. Yeah. Go peep. I think he's got a couple left. I'm not, I'm not too sure. So go, go cool. peep out. Uh, Jared, Jared Porter, J A W R R R, I think on, on Instagram, jar. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. One more question here and then, and then we'll wrap up. We could keep going forever. I'm sure. But, oh, yeah. but we'll, we'll put a bow on this here in a, a quick second. Uh, Moscow Slayer wants to know what's Liam's favorite Kendama edit and, mm. and where Liam gets inspiration for new tricks. We kind of hit on that second half of the question a couple of times here. So, yep. but what's your favorite edit? That is a incredibly hard question. Um, I'm a huge fan of a lot of the older edits. I love like the Wenatchee Kanama team, like where we yeah. are and stuff like that. But um, <laughs> Keith Matsumura. Mm. Oh wait, oh I miss Keith's dude prime days. I there was a there was, was a, a Facebook event. Did are you on Facebook? Uh, I'm I'm on like FKC. I just don't really go on there that much. So there was a quick quick little aside here. There was a Facebook event that was scheduled like two years ago that just surpassed like a couple weeks ago. I think it was December 27th or something like that. It was called the Melting of Keith Matsumura, and <laughs> and the whole like event description was about how we're all gonna gather around this this frozen Keith Matsumura and and warm it to melt him and bring him back into Kandong. It was the most ridiculous thing ever. But, That's but it was the funniest I thing I ever found by accident while exploring fkc <laughs> we gotta get him back into the game he was one of the undisputed goats at the time yeah, dude Huge inspiration oh love Keith but, um, so much it's really hard to pick an edit though out of all of the amazing ones that existed back in the day so i would say my favorite older edit would probably be carson valley kendama edit three for those it, it's kind of an old edit it has mm -hmm. people like um uh joey swisher uh, yep. former RWB player. Uh, and he was like a huge uh, inspiration. He was one, one of like the more low key players at the time, but I remember him winning. Um, what was it? it was the cook's custom contest way back then. He had a great edit and that, and that edit was really good too. Um, so shout out to Joey Swisher. Um, but Carson Valley Kanama edit three had just like the, the vibes that you need in Kanama. It was like mm -hmm. the music was great. That the way the video was put together was awesome. All the guys on the team are really cool. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a fun edit to watch. And it was a pretty good length, too. It was a, I don't want to get this wrong, like anywhere from like a nine to like 12 minute edit. I, I don't want to get that wrong, but it, it's a pretty lengthy mm -hmm. edit. It's definitely a fun one to watch. Um, and then I'm trying to think of like recent edits because um, people are grinding them out right now and they're all incredible. Yeah, edits are coming back. They're back in style right now. And I love it. The I new, love it. new yeah. edit comp has been great. a great inspo. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's it's honestly too hard to pick one uh, in like uh, like a current edit. I just love seeing what everyone's putting out. Yeah. Oh yeah. Everyone's uh, keeping should, me inspired. Yeah. Let me give a quick shout out to Colin Hislop. He just put out mm. like an hour and some long edit. He filmed a, a trick every day for 365 days. Yeah. Uh, that's whack. Uh, yeah, that is Colin. Yeah. Yeah. Go go watch that edit. It's really yeah. good. Go I, follow I'm, Colin. I don't even know if sure. I finished it yet. I think I'm like three quarters through, and I've been like slowly. I need to watch that taking bites out of it. Cool. Well, hey, Liam, thank you so much for jumping on the review this weekend. Uh, thank you for the work that you've done in Kendama. Thank you for setting a good example of competitive Kendama play for us to, to really to climb to that bar. You've set a really high bar for us in terms of consistency, professionality, and competitive play by always showing up, always fighting for that top spot. Uh, I think there's a lot of learning here today for especially younger players that maybe are feeling a bit defeated, you know, that they, they haven't been playing for long and they're, they're not winning their matches, whatever it is. Keep showing up, be resilient, yeah. focus on growing, yeah, focus on practice. Key. That's a huge takeaway from, from this. Yeah. yeah. And organize your life, man. Uh, go organize what you're doing. Focus on getting your, your priorities in order then play, then, then hit the Dama, then do all those things. I'm saying that as I got a pile of boxes over here that I need to organize and put away. So, so I'm, I'm saying that with a big foot in my mouth, but, but let me also say a personal thank you, Liam. Uh, for those of you in the chat that don't know, uh, Liam actually did a really wonderful favor for me uh, for my nephew's birthday. I don't know if you remember this, but my yeah, nephew, dude. Judah, yeah, dude. Uh, so I got my How's he doing? Dude, he's, he's loving it, uh, and he's doing good. My nephew's like eight years old, I think, or nine. I don't even know, 10 maybe. Who knows anymore these Who days? Who knows? Growing too but, fast. But it was his birthday back in, oh, what was it? 
it was it was like July or August yeah. or something like that. It was it was a couple months back, six five or six months ago, and and he had been. I gave him like an old kendama once upon a time. It was like a dollar store one, and he was asking for a kendama for his birthday. And and obviously, people know I do distribution for Soul, and so I had a, a couple Souls, and I was like, man, I want to get him one of these. And and I had asked him, I showed him all of them when they came in, and I was like, sorry, buddy, yeah, I can't give these to you. These are these are I need to sell them uh, to to the people in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, secretly what i asked him was uh, which one is your favorite of all of these these kendamas here and he said that one that one's th the best he loved he loved the nasa the blue he liked the colors and then and i showed him a bunch of your edits and then he became a big fan of yours he's like oh liam's so cool and and then i was That's like awesome. oh you know what for his birthday i'm gonna get him one of these but more than that i'm gonna see if i can dm liam and send, get liam to give him a birthday message because my nephew like loves professionals in any sport he's like a big nerd when it comes to hockey you know, like Sidney Ooh, Crosby, yeah. you name it. All he loves all of those guys and, and thinks they're so cool. And so for him to get a personalized message from a Kanama pro meant the world to him. So, anyways, shout out to Liam for for going above and beyond and, and serving the younger generation, or at least at least my nephew and sending a personalized oh, yeah. birthday message. Anytime. So thank you, man. Thank you for jumping on here. This was a, an excellent episode. Uh, we got a fire one coming up next week too with Mr. Matt Sweets Jorgensen, the owner Ooh. of Sweets Kendamas, the longtime Kendama legend, the creator yeah. of the Sweets special. You guys all know who he is. I don't need to give much of an intro to him, but we got him jumping on the Brewview next week. We're going to be talking about the building of Sweets Kendamas, pretty much the empire in Kendama. Right That'll be now. a good so, one. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. And like always, I'm going to be in the Discord after this episode to answer questions. I'll probably jump in the voice chat while I upload this episode. And you can catch this if you're tuning in late on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And tune into the review, man. Dude, Liam, we're done. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Dude, thank Be you. Fun. And is there anything else you'd like to say? Your last final words to those that are tuning in, listening. Um, I'll say this again for all you guys. Um, Whatever you do, don't get discouraged. I'm just throwing out my wise words. Just never let anything discourage you. If something bad does come around unexpected. Don't let it affect you too much. Keep a level head. Know what your priorities are and just do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Dude, what a great wrap up. Thank you so much, Liam. And we will catch you next week on The Preview. All right. See you guys. Thank you, man.